Today, it's the best of the best as we take a look back over the first series of Prank Patrol. We're going to be reliving some of those pranking moments and bringing you up to speed on some of the moments that you may have missed. Take a look. Here they come, they're on a roll. Well, they'll strike nobody, no. If you have a point to prove, they'll make a plan and see it through. They'll sign you up to join their crew. Yes, it's your ultimate guide to creating mega pranks. I'll also be revealing my top five pranks from the series. Plus, it's payback time for one of our targets. Now, this is the badge that everyone wants. And once you join the prank patrol, I'll give you one of these, which means you are a VIP, a very important prankster. And believe it or not, some of you are really hard to get hold of. And that's when I have to be... Let's say inventive. Oh, that's definitely him. Hello? Intercept TV signal. That's definitely her. Let's go get our prankster, dear. Liz Hartley? Yeah? Eric Fish? Yes? Helena Smith? Yeah? How are you doing? How would you like to make your dream prank come true? Yeah! You would? Then congratulations. You are the newest member of the Prank Patrol. You'll need this, and you'll also need this. Now, over the first series, most of the magic has happened right where I'm standing, here at Prank HQ. We've created latex monsters, we've got mummies, aliens, exploding pins, exploding flower, and of course, I've been helped all the way along with my trusty pranking martial artists, the ninjas. <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. What's all this, then? Now, the most important part of creating the perfect prank is the idea. What's the one thing that you can do that will really wind your mate up? And how are you going to pull it off? Now, I've asked this question so many times in the prank band, and the answers that I've had, well, let's just say that's where the imagination really kicks in. Oh, like, because, like, it's computer games and everything, I thought about, you know, taking them to, like, a fake testing area. And like you know those you know those suits they wear you know like those motion motion sensor motion ones. Motion sensor yeah, yeah, yeah. ones. I yeah. thought thought about like if you could wear them and try and fool him or something. I can make a piece of valuable artwork which isn't really valuable and sell it off to the auction for thousands. You mean we can have like a fake auction? Yes. And one of your pieces of artwork goes for like thousands of yes. pounds. That's a great idea. Salty soup, so everyone salt else's could have been good. And then his would be all horrible, full, filled with salt. I like it. So everybody else is having a great time and he's getting rubbish food. That's a great way to start things off. So what have you got in mind? Well, I asked Tom one time if he was afraid of spiders and he said no. Oh, come on. Everyone's afraid of spiders. You've got eight legs. It's unnatural. Yeah, they run fast. They go up your sleeves. You can't get them out. It's scary. It's creepy, man. And he's saying he's not scared of them. Yeah. OK. What have you got in mind for the prank, then? Well, you know, because of that, I think we should use a spider. But not just a spider. A giant spider. I like it. She could be scared by a monster. <laughs> a monster? A water monster? Loch Ness Monster. The, lo the Loch Ness Monster's good. That's, that's the right thought, definitely. I'm not too sure whether we can actually get the Loch Ness Monster, because he's very busy, what with tourists and everything in Scotland, so we could, um, we could make one. Uh, big scary teeth. Really big eyes. I was thinking that there could be, like, a press day, and there could be a new rocket, and a crazy spaceman, and I was thinking that there could be, like, some aliens from outer space. So once you've got your idea, there's still loads more things to think about, like the makeup. Uh, then there's the props, and, of course, costumes. 
Thanks for that, Ninjas. And more importantly, I think, the setup. We've got to make what we're doing look believable. But of course, the key to a great prank is preparation. If you want a crop circle, well, get permission from a friendly farmer, get some wood, some string, and get to work. What about some gorilla poo? Well, roll up your sleeves, and then roll up the poo. Or how about icing a huge wedding cake that's going to be the icing on a fabulous prank? Or designing a spaceship to really fool a friend that they are going into space? At Prank Patrol, the sky really is the limit. Now, I love getting fully involved with the pranks. I'll quite happily dress like a dummy, or even like a, a mummy, as the case may be in this one, because we needed an Egyptian theme for Freddy's prank on his best mate, Billy. Now, we recruited this mummy here, but he was rubbish at lines, so I had a go, and I think it's fair to say I got quite, um, quite wrapped up in this prank. I made Barney look older by bandaging him in very, like, old-themed bandages and kind of wrapped him round and put him in a costume. So what do you reckon? Do I look old enough? Uh, no, I think you need a bit more ageing. OK, yeah, that's, that's definitely enough no, now. Thank, thank, you. thank you. That's great. Nope, nope, just a bit more. Yeah, no, seriously, that's, that's a lot. Ah! <laughs> OK, so here comes Billy with his mum. Let the pranking commence. Hello. So what we want you two to do is to arrange everything in order so that it will attract young people. This is... this looks... Oh. What? Put it back, put it back. <laughs> My goodness! Who's responsible for this? Yeah. Oh, which one of you is responsible for this? <laughs> Did you see him picking it up? He was like... Anyway, we have yes. to get it back immediately. Ah, what does it say? Bar... Car... Shah... This... Is mine... Not... Yours. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> You've been pranked by the prank patrol. How you doing? <laughs> I got you! <laughs> now, when you're pranking somebody, you don't have to just prank one person. You can prank loads if you want to, as Jake Woods found out when we went to film a fake promotion in front of his entire karate class. Yeah, all of them. Yeah! <laughs> Look at us getting into the swing of things. I'm liking yeah. this, Jake. Now, listen, I've just heard, right, that your friends are only moments away. We are about to do this. How are you feeling? I'm feeling really excited. I can't wait to do my big part. OK, so the students are beginning to arrive, and I'm beginning to feel the butterflies. Let's just hope that Jake can keep his nerves in check. I'm here to talk about Kung Pao. It's an amazing new cool drink. I actually drink this now. I'm actually a, a third down at Taekwondo just from drinking this drink. It sounds hard to believe, I know, because you're putting all this training in, but I'm going to hopefully demonstrate to you today how powerful it is. I need a volunteer. Now then, I wonder um, who I'll pick. Yes, you young man. Give him a round of applause as he comes up. Now, Jake, you're going to try Kung Pao, OK? It's really nice. Three, two, one. Oof. And there you have it. A round of applause. Absolutely fantastic. We're talking about two things now, aren't we? We're talking about Kung Pao being what? No, 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 no. Seriously, you can't drink any more than one. Another thing about Kung Pao, you can only drink one glass a day. Any more than that. No, no, it's, it's not. It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Honestly, seriously, mate, you can't. No, Jake, Jake, really, you can't have any more. You can't. You can't do it. I want more. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, whoa, 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 hang on. Calm down, no, come over here. Don't... Whoa! Oh, seriously, oh, just take your aggression out there. Calm down, calm down. Just a couple of punches. All right, guys, it's all right. He's, he's, he's taking out his energy, OK? It's he's getting rid of his energy on the bag. Right. This is perfectly nice normal. Nice and easy, that's it's it. perfectly nice fine. It's OK. Oh, oh. Are you OK? Oh. Stu, are you all right? A bit of... Whoa! Oh. 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 Wait, wait, oh. I've gone too far now. Don't... Oh. Oh.
Oh. Hi. Did you know the key to a successful prank is to keep it real? So, when our friend Harry wanted to prank his mates into believing that aliens had landed in his back garden and a UFO had flown over his house, our friends at BBC News were only too happy to help. Excuse me. Everybody, come through. There's something funny on the TV. Look. Early this morning, sometime before dawn, a number of crop circles were discovered in these fields. We're going to try and get into it to uh, actually see what's happened. Guys, are you still getting this? Can you, can you still see me? Yeah, you're still there. OK, well, I'm inside the crop circle now, and it's absolute... I'm, I'm, I'm well into that UFO stuff, because I've had a theory for years <laughs> that, no, no, the airspace over Buxton is being used by aliens for, like, an interplanetary rendezvous point. I knew it. Lies! Lies! Oh, there, look! Lights! There's lights up there! Through that door! <laughs> Come and check it out! It might be nothing. Hello? Hello? Oh, look what... Oh, oh, don't, oh don't leave me! We, we, we come in peace. What? He's trying to, trying to say something. What's he trying to say? What's he saying? What? Why don't you tell him, Harry? You mean Pat by the Pat Patrol? Oh, oh, <laughs> not really an alien. In our next prank, Olivia convinced her friend Sophie that she was to co-present a promotional video for a safari park. We got her to kiss cockroaches, blech. then we got her very wet in a sea lion pool, with the grand finale of using a special sign language to communicate with a new arrival, the hyper-intelligent Graham the Gorilla. Which was me, actually. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Hey Sophie. <laughs> Good pranks by the pranks. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> now, personally, I love it when you can push the prank just a little bit further than you were going to. It gives it just a bit of an edge. And believe it or not, the more real you keep a situation, the more you can get people to do absolutely anything you want. Take a look at this. For rap star, our prankster Shalon didn't just persuade his family to believe he's been signed up by a top record company, he also got them to appear in his new rap video, dressed in the very latest fashion designs that we actually found in the wardrobe at Prank HQ. Now, out of 19 episodes, it's been really difficult to choose my top five pranks, but I have done it. I've narrowed them all down, so here's a countdown of my top five pranks of the first series, starting with Magic Show. <laughs> The prank here was based in my hometown of Blackpool, where our prankster Jasmine was trained up in some magic tricks, while our prank patrol magician Stephen pretended to forget his tricks to fool her friend Chloe. Chloe began to think that Jasmine really had magic powers, especially when she started reading the special spell cards. It was almost time for a grand entrance for Barney the Wizard. Summon as Alabita, his name can only be spoken from the seed of Alamat. Alabaster. Chloe, you've just been pranked by the prank patrol. Yeah, maybe. Oh, oh Chloe. <laughs> All right. Um, Are you okay? I have a shaky. Feel your heart go boom, 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 boom on your shoulders. And to think, all that time with a trained magician, and I still never got the hang of the magic thing. Oh well. Here's number four, the Mia Monster. Now this was a really ambitious stunt that got us all very, very wet. We needed to convince Alice's friend Kira that there was a monster in the Mia where she was filming a kayaking video. In the setup, we created a scary latex mask and body. 
On location, we had to subtly convince Kira that a mere monster existed. A poster here or there. Some spoof press reporters on the trail of the mere monster. Uh, excuse me. But for the hit itself, our latex monster, combined with our spooky sound effects, really did the trick. I love being in the water with my canoe. It's fun and safe. Oh, right. Whoa, whoa, what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, okay. We're going to... <laughs> Hey, Kira, I, I, think, I think we know what happened there. Yeah. Do you want to tell her, Alice? She's been tight by the prank show. Give her a round of applause, everyone. Yay! What a good sport. If you've just joined us, hello. I'm currently counting down the top five pranks from the first series of Prank Patrol. We've done five and four, and we're now on three, when the ninjas and I travel to a North Wales bakery with a young lad called Oliver to cook up a very nice smelling prank. <laughs> Prankster Oliver convinced his pal Holly that he'd landed them a job at a local bakery. Since Holly liked home baking anyway, it seemed to be a dream job, until all the things that we'd rigged to go wrong actually did. First, we made sure that when the mixer was turned on, there would be a real mess. Then, when prank patrol actor Rob called for a pep talk, the ninjas swapped a normal loaf for a very burnt one. What's happened here? And guess who was going to get the blame? We left Holly alone to put the finishing touches to some cakes. Sounds easy. Well, it is, until you add a dollop of ninjas. Oh, hi. OK, counting down to the number two prank. You can see it's got zero gravity, but maximum fun. We use this, the Stratos 220, and one of the world's largest radio telescopes in what I like to call the Jodrell prank. You'll see why. I've got to say, it was one of our most ambitious pranks yet. We had a spoof press conference, a made-up space rocket, and a conversation with a Russian cosmonaut in a space station who, one, was a Londoner, and two, only in the next room. Ella wanted to convince her mate Louise that she was blasting off into space. It's a tall order, but it's amazing what you can do with actors and a space simulator. Did you touch the button? No! What's happened? Why, why is the door closing? Who pressed it? I didn't, we didn't oh, press it. We didn't it's press it. It's going to be tight. Oh. Oh. Why did you press it? What's going on down there? Oh. It's not functioning. It's preparing for launch. I think that's the engines firing. Oh, just hang on. Hello. Hello. Stratos 220. Hello. I can now confirm that you're orbiting the Earth. It's OK. We're in space. It's OK. I've got someone here who wants to have a word. Uh, hey, guys. How's space? Uh, Louise, I think Ella has something to say to you. Louise, you've been pranked by the prank, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we are, the number one spot. Who did I choose out of all of those episodes to be my favourite? Well, when I first heard the idea, I thought it was the craziest thing I had ever heard. And to be quite honest, I didn't think we were going to pull it off, but, um, we did. Joe's brother James is really into computer games, so he jumped at the chance to try out a new game featuring ace character Colonel Combat, which was really me in a robot suit. We also fooled James into thinking he could control Colonel Combat by using our special motion sensor suit, which was very expensively made using an old tracksuit and ping pong balls. Something weird's going on, the monitor's gone down. James, yeah? Uh, we've got to reboot. In order to reboot, you need to just bring your hand to your face and slap it slowly. OK, and now. That's it. Do Bring not it hit me. Did something happen then? Yeah, it said do not hit me. What? It said do not hit me. Try it, it... again, no. It's... Try it again. Better, that I was... said do not hit me. Keep looking at the screen. We're gonna, it's going to be left hand again, but you're going to have to slap yourself a bit harder. Is that OK? Ready? Go, now. Hard. Terminate program. Terminate program. Terminate program. I don't know. Terminate um, program. Hang on, we're Terminate just going to check what's going on. Terminate program. Terminate program. Terminate program. Hello, James. 
You've just been pranked by the prank patrol. Oh, oh my yeah. God! <laughs> that was so freaky! All right, James. Yes. So it's quite clear to see there why James was number one choice for the best reaction ever on Prank Patrol. And we thought it was just too special an occasion to not get him in and talk about it. James, how you doing? Right, Barney. How you doing, fella? Welcome to Prank HQ. You're gonna need one of these. One of these. Because James, if you just put this on a second. You're starting to Are work out what's going on. Are we pranking Joe? Are we pranking Joe? Yeah. It's your turn to get Joe back. Oh, yes. This is so mint. We're getting him back. We're, we're going to get him good. We are so going to get him good. We've thought about it, OK? Now, we've only got 24 hours to do this prank. We normally have a bit longer. So, we've already got him uh, a theatre booked. We've got a script sent out. And we've got an actor to give him an audition that he will never forget. Because, of course, he likes to be a bit of an actor. So, all we've got to do first off is sort out the costume and then let's get this prank underway. Are you ready? Yeah. One of those? Follow me. And here we are at the wardrobe where, if we just pull this back, you'll see the costumes and the director. Cut, perfect. <laughs> Very nice. Get into character there, Stephen. James, meet Stephen, one of Frank Patrol's top Hi, actors. Hi. Now, Stephen's going to be playing the mad director at Joe's fake audition. There's something else we'd like, though, isn't there? A mad costume for Joe. A mad costume. Got any ideas? Policeman's outfit in Leary Leary Lou. I like that. Yeah, I like that as well. Yeah, okay. Cool. And just to make sure he's nice and relaxed in the audition. This lovely purple dress for me. You couldn't help yourself, could you? Yeah. No. Fair enough. Are you ready for this prank, then? Yep. yep. Beautiful. Excuse me one second. Ninjas, start the van! Let's get to the theatre. Come on. The blueprint for our first ever payback prank is one theatre stage, ready for one crazy Ooh. actor to give a bonkers audition to a former prankster, dressed in some wacky outfits leaving them well and truly pranked. So, Joe has just arrived. He's down there in the waiting room now, going through his lines with the other girls. And leave it, you nightmare. Oh, no. Uh, no, leave it alone. Get back to your quiet practice and being a ten-year-old. Yeah, OK. Well, I'm just getting another one now. Uh, Joe Barrett. Do you want to follow me? You ready for this? Oh, yes. Revenge is sweet. Yep. One of those. Have yourself a seat. Thank you. Right. Oop. Sorry about that. You've done TV before, haven't you? Yes. Do you do a thing called Prank Troll? No. Uh, it's on TMI. TMI. Oh, yeah, the Saturday morning Yeah, thing. Saturday morning. I did, um, I got chosen for that and to prank my brother. So, did he deserve it, then? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like it, I like it. That. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, uh, best get started. I suppose you've uh, you've read the script. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What do you think of it? Oh, it looks good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Let's uh, get started. We'll be needing that. Mm -hmm. So, can you beatbox? Um. If uh, if a rhyme or a rap or something comes into your mind, just go for it. Okay. Ready? My name's Joe. I'm here for the show. Yeah. I'm down with the flow. Yeah. I hope you don't blow, man. Yeah. What? Yeah. That's good, isn't it? That's good. That's good. Right. It's ballet. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to actually ballet dance. What I want to see is how you move to the music. Alright. Side to side as you need to. I mean, should you do any martial arts? Any Tai Chi or anything like that? Excellent. Right. Now we need to see how well you can actually do in, in a character. So, a we'll... little role play. So, I just want you to pretend. Nice choice of costume, though. That's working well. Yeah. Just so for saying sake, I'm a woman who's lost her cat. So, just knock on the door and then we'll go from there. Hello? Hello? My cat's been stolen. I think someone's taken it. Uh, where were you when the cat was stolen? I was in the kitchen. I mean, why, why do you need to know that? These I mean, people enter your house, then? No, they were in the garden. And they just went... Uh, did they jump over the wall? Yes, they jumped over the garden. I mean, why aren't you out there looking for okay, clues and okay, things? OK, calm down. You know, calm down, why? Please, calm why? down. Why? My cat, that's calm my down. livelihood. That's my livelihood. Oh, oh, oh. Not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. <laughs> 
Can you sing? Sing. Sing. Sing like what? Just just give us something like uh, Twinkle Twinkle. Okay. Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, how I wonder That's what it. Keep going. you are. Well done, Steve. That was fabulous. If you can do it without costume. Okay. So, just going to do a little something like, uh, like I don't know, maybe something in the style of EastEnders. Hey, yeah. What are you doing round here? What are you doing round here, right? More, more. Come on. Right. What are you doing round here? 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 That's it. Give me more. Give ah. me more anger. Ah. 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 Great. Let's move on to the last bit now, mate. Now, what I need you to do. Hmm, mm, it's quite nice. That cream. Cream and custard. And what I need you to do is I want you to pie yourself. In the face? In the face, OK. What I need you to do is just kind of react to it. OK, you've been pied in the face, it's got... Oh! God! You know? OK, yeah. Sort of really, really try and respond to it. Whatever. Here come the executive producers. Right. You ready? So, yep. One of them. Let's do it. You know, it's a bit of a shock. It's happened there, OK? So, I'm just going to give you to the count of three and just react to it. Okay. okay. One, two, three. <laughs> That's it. Wipe <laughs> it from your eyes. <laughs> I'm great, the exact array. There you go, mate. Well, that was a fabulous performance, darlings. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Would you like to say something there? Would you like to just hold that and give us a bit of a call? Joseph Barrett, you have been pranked by the Prank Patrol! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing, fella? You look a mess. How are you? you? I'm all right, mate. Good to see you again. Oh, ha! Ha! Do you recognise the exact producer down uh, here? Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you've done this again. <laughs> oh. Let's lay this thing to rest. Who is the best prank about me and you? Me? me. You? Yeah. You, yeah. Yours is only a small one. Mine was, like, massive. I have had an absolute ball on this prank. I mean, I have for all 19 episodes. It's just this one was a bit more special because, of course, it was uh, it was a revenge. It was a payback, and uh, James put everything into it. And it was just nice to see Joe again as well. In fact, I want to see everybody again. I'm the, the end. End. The end. I'm the number one. Pranker. I'm the number one. I'm the number one pranker. I'm the number one pranker. I'm the number one pranker. What a great way to end our look back at Prank Patrol. So we've got the number one prankster Joe Barrett, and now the number one payback prankster James Barrett. Happy with that? Yep. I'll see you very soon on Prank Patrol. Go on, it's all over to you. And that's a wrap. Yeah.